I have a question. What would you do if you woke up and had mobs powers? Because me personally, I'd probably overthrow the government. But that got me thinking. What would Naruto do if he had so much unfathomable power? Would Naruto still be a good guy? Does he still care about becoming Hokage? And would he even face any challenges with the many foes that he has? Well, if you're curious to find those things out, then stick around to the end of the video. But first, before we get started, if you're going to enjoy today's video, then consider leaving a like, seeing it as it only takes one second. And it seriously does help out the channel so much more than you guys can imagine. So with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Okay. So to start this video off, there's a couple ways that this story would work. Number one, we could go down the rabbit hole where Naruto has some traumatic event happen to him, and because of that, he ends up limiting his power, therefore ending up just like Mob does in the Mob Psycho anime. Or we could go with the other path, which is the one that I personally am more fond of, where Naruto would end up being the only Esper in this world. And not only that, but Naruto uses that power to get everything he wants, uses the power in the way that honestly, I probably would use it as well for his own selfish benefit. And the reason that I can see that working so much better in this world is because it's not the modern era. It's not a world where wars and killing doesn't happen on a day to day basis. And it's looked down upon here. It's kill or be killed here to become a powerful shinobi, to be somebody in this world. Power is everything. And Naruto is going to be born with so much of it that it's not even going to be funny. First of all, the first thing that I need to mention is number one, how I want things to start off with just the day of the nine tails. See, this is something interesting because Naruto could A, inherit the nine tails and still have it sealed within himself or B, we could have something absolutely insane go down where Naruto doesn't actually end up getting the nine tails and instead naruto would show off his powers for the first time as a literal infant and honestly i think that that scene sounds cool could you just imagine an anime opening up with 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 the scene with the literal baby and then being like yep yeah, you see that that's me you know like something like that that would be absolutely insane in my opinion and that's exactly what we're going to be going for in terms of how i want to take this what if naruto is literally going to be a baby and in this moment kurama's claw is going to be coming right at him in that moment his parents minato and kushina would both be ready to drill throw themselves in front of him save their young baby but instead naruto who's crying and completely in anguish hearing roars hearing all of these crazy things going on around him his asper abilities would go absolutely insane and naruto was a baby not being able to actually control his emotions would literally focus in all of his energy that he's gathered over the past like months since he's been sentient uh which is obviously like in his mom's belly or whatever and um he would literally aim it at kurama and just boom like kurama disappears like I, I, I don't know how else to put it. Kurama is literally gone from the picture. There is no Kurama. That, that's it. It's done. Finito, right? And Naruto is now just sitting there as a baby with Minato looking at, at, at his son, Naruto, and literally having way more time to actually talk to him. This time, Minato and Kushina's final words are going to be a lot, a lot crazier. Like, not crazier, but they're going to have a lot more time to speak to him. And uh kushina even though she is gonna die because obviously the nine tails was extracted from her and uh, minato is gonna die because you know reaper death seal they both are able to have just a longer moment with naruto and eventually once haruzen would arrive minato would make haruzen promise that he's gonna be raising his son right with kushina saying that if he doesn't he's gonna have a world to pay in the other life and from here they would both pass on as naruto would be put in the hands of haruzen i know awful choice and um, because of this, what would pretty much end up going down is that Naruto would grow up just like he did in the original with no problems until the age of four, which is when we are told that Naruto would have his identity as the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails revealed. This time, when Naruto turns to the age of four, nothing happens because keep in mind, Naruto isn't the re uh, isn't going to be inheriting the Nine Tails, but Naruto's whiskers do kind of make something look a little weird. And unfortunately for Naruto, he still is going to be framed as the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Number one, because the village needs to make it seem like somebody has the Nine Tails so that the other villages don't attack. Number two, Naruto has those whiskers that he kind of got because of the fact that Kurama was inside of Kushina. So they're still going to be making Naruto the target of all the hate hatred and even though i said it wasn't gonna happen i kind of realized that that can't work so yeah naruto is going to be uh having to deal with all of the tragedies that came with the original version and then some so 
yeah because of that naruto's gonna be having to deal with the hatred and this time around it would manifest in naruto being like i, I like what did i do like I, I just don't get it but because naruto has the abilities of being an esper and he can read people's minds he would end up finding out that the reason for all the hatred is because naruto was the nine tails in Chiriki. and when he finds this out he would be like no i'm not like the nine tails in Chiriki is not even in me but he would end up finally discovering that that was a lie told because the village sort of needs Naruto to be a person that is said to inhabit the Nine Tails so that other villages don't attack. And when Naruto found this out, he would immediately question Haruzen on this, being like, why would you let this lie go about? Like, I'm being hated for absolutely no reason. I, I didn't choose this. And Haruzen would look at Naruto and tell him that unfortunately it's something that he has to bear. It was out of his control. Danzo ended up leaking false information and from there it was hard to sort of get it back. Naruto would look at Haruzen and say that he's dumb for that. And from here would slam the door as he leaves with, uh, you know, um, Haruzen just kind of like sighing, being like, I knew this might have come. That boy's crazy abilities are going to be the death of me someday. And from here naruto would just sort of like go to his house where he would sit down and think about things like everyone hates me because i'm supposedly some vessel for more chakra some beast like are they could they possibly be any more dumb and naruto would just kind of harbor this resentment for people of just like they are such fools like i can't believe it naruto not only that would also formulate this idea in his head of Hiruzen's a fool he's not fit to be hokage somebody needs to come into power who's gonna actually fix this world and that would be sort of naruto's goal coming into power not because he wants to be respected but wanting to become hokage because of the fact that naruto thinks that everyone around him is just so much more beneath him and naruto wants them to sort of listen to him because he feels so above everyone else which um uh fortunately for himself is actually a hundred percent accurate because of this what we would end up pretty much having is a couple year time skip in which naruto would discover more and more abilities that he has with his esper telekinesis and all these crazy telepath telepathic abilities that he would end up discovering while naruto would go to the academy naruto would literally be at the top of his class for everything however that would be with naruto barely even trying because naruto just couldn't possibly be bothered naruto would get a little bit of shikamaru's personality on him not because he hangs out with shikamaru but just because naruto genuinely does think that everyone is just like literally so beneath him and he's not wrong for that he's going to be extremely cocky in this version of events and that's something that i think i want to keep around so naruto in this timeline is going to be having a little bit of a different upbringing where sometimes the people are like scared of him for being the nine tails in Chiriki, he would look at them and say hey don't make me mad or else i might go crazy right and like just laugh about it as some people would genuinely take it seriously and others would sort of just realize that naruto is literally as harmless as it comes naruto was literally never hurt anybody for no reason if he doesn't have to because he literally just views himself as so much above them that he doesn't have to which is just like it's crazy bro's literally inheriting he, he's becoming a mini escanor which is which is just insane to think about but um yeah that's what actually ends up happening and eventually we would get the full full time skip where eventually we would find ourselves outside in the academy where iruka sensei would actually tell the class that they need to do a little bit of a sparring session to determine the rookie of the year whether it should be sasuke who has the best grades in the class and who always consistently performs very well in everything or naruto who doesn't have the best grades in the world but blows every single physical exam out of the water or sorry everything else out of the water like he's just that strong and so what would pretty much end up happening is Iruka would look at them both and just be like Hajime as both of them would immediately look at each other and Sasuke being like this is the day I finally beat Naruto because keep in mind Naruto is more than once beaten Sasuke in, in a fight because Sasuke is the kind of person who wants to always feel like he's on top and if he feels like he's not he's gonna try to prove it to everyone that he really and utterly is and that's exactly what would happen so Sasuke would jump in and immediately shoot a fireball at Naruto's direction which it wouldn't even come like make any contact with him because of the energy barrier that naruto would form around himself suddenly naruto would lift his hand up catching sasuke in the air not even letting him move as he would tell sasuke to slow down as he would then finally let him go sasuke would hit the ground and immediately grab a couple of kunai and shuriken as he would throw them at the direction of naruto and naruto instantly holding one hand out would pause all of them as he immediately shoots them into the sky and they would explode shocking everybody in the class as sasuke would 
grit his teeth being like damn it as from here he would rush back in at naruto throwing kicks punches but and essentially naruto would just counter them parry them and make sasuke look like a child sasuke in this moment would be getting angrier and angrier and naruto would just look at him with this expression of are we done here yet and sasuke would try over and over but try as he might he just could not do a single thing to naruto and eventually naruto would just look at sasuke as he pauses him and just sort of begins like pushing him outside of a outside of the no nah, that's not no nah, that's not cool enough um naruto would literally just pause him and say we're done here as he walks off and eventually he lets sasuke go from his um teleco uh, telekinetic control and sasuke would just begin moving just being like how is he so strong because sasuke has realized one thing about naruto naruto has always seemed to be this strong from the moment that naruto was so young he's always just seemed untouchable like sure there's itachi's levels of powers and then there's naruto sasuke even has a suspicion that naruto might even be stronger than itachi and it's just so crazy for sasuke to even think about but naruto he's just living a sort of bored existence eventually we jump up to the day where the team would finally be formulated because this time there is absolutely zero ways that mizuki is actually going to be getting naruto to steal the scroll of ceiling this means that somebody else would be given that opportunity and unfortunately for them they are probably going to get beat not only are they going to get beat but without naruto being the one that's actually there present i 100 percent believe iruka probably dies to mizuki in that battle and not only that but iruka would or, or mizuki would probably probably end up running off with the scroll it would be at this point that naruto of all people would actually end up being summoned by haruzen as haruzen would end up actually asking naruto if he can do him a favor and capture mizuki and naruto would just be like are you serious like you can't send your onboos or some ninjas out and you know haruzen would just be like he's too far out and naruto would be like are you like i better be getting paid for this as haruzen would say you are the usual rate since there's been times where haruzen literally would just send naruto out on missions that he just doesn't feel comfortable with sending most of his other ninjas on so naruto in an instant would just teleport out of there arriving in front of mizuki who would be like naruto what what are you doing here actually sh shaking and shivering because like he's seen what naruto can do and he would just literally place a scroll on the on the tree branch that he was on just being like look you can take it back I'll turn myself in. And Naruto would say, no, it's a little deeper than that. You made me get out of my bed. As from here, Naruto would straight up use lightning as a push, like it would shock Mizuki and Mizuki would just fall off onto the ground unconscious as Naruto would throw him over his shoulder and teleport back to the village where Naruto would arrive telling Hiruzen that he better be getting paid double for this since he was sleeping. From here, Hiruzen would nod as eventually Naruto would be placed on the Team 7 and we would get the introductions. Naruto would say that his goal is to become the Hokage and lead these worthless people into an age of power. Or a genuine, um, I don't know, just, just, just something weird, cocky and intellectual or something. I can't think of anything. But um, yeah, following this, Naruto would just leave and Kakashi would be wondering about Naruto, knowing that he's extremely powerful. He would wonder why naruto even is bothering becoming a genin if he's as powerful as all these things are saying anyways two days uh, no not two days but the day would pass and eventually we would find ourselves in the forest where they would be told by kakashi to actually end up arriving naruto once he gets there would end up immediately realizing that, so that kakashi is five minutes late and naruto was just absolutely not having it he's like how long what time did so uh, did kakashi tell us to be here again and sakura would be like oh well kakashi sensei said he would be here it probably not going to take him too long so naruto would immediately teleport in front of kakashi disappearing from in front of sasuke and sakura as he would look at kakashi and say when were you planning on getting to the training grounds and kakashi would just like be like i didn't expect him to teleport here as he would put a hand behind his head and say he was gonna get there pretty soon but naruto looks at him with a dumbfounded expression just like no you weren't and immediately he would grab on a kakashi and teleport them where kakashi said he was gonna be at immediately kakashi would then go on to go on to uh immediately kakashi explains the rules of the bell test and once he would do so naruto sakura and sasuke would all be told that they have to get these bells naruto the second he sees this he would just wait for kakashi to be like three two one as naruto just immediately would just like be like <laughs> you know what i mean and then he would just like flick his uh like go like like snap his fingers sorry and two bells would appear in naruto's hands as naruto holds one out 
tosses it to Sakura, tosses the other one to Kakashi or, or to Sasuke. And um, he would just look at Kakashi and say, look, they can pass. I'll stay in the academy another year. I really could not care less. And Kakashi, once he sees this, would be like, what the heck? Like, this kid is just not normal. Like, Minato, what did you like? Like, what happened? You know what I mean? Like, as Naruto would sort of just look at Kakashi and ask if they're done here. But Kakashi would say that that wasn't the point of the exam, that unfortunately they failed. The point of this was to show, but before he could even say it, Naruto would look at him and say teamwork. I think that was teamwork. I sacrificed myself for the sake of the mission. We pass, Kakashi. With Kakashi saying, how did he know that? And Naruto saying, I read your mind. As he walks off and literally just leaves the team dumbfounded. Naruto from here would make his way home where he would lay down on his bed and just begin to think about things, saying... What would life be like if I didn't have these powers? Just like pausing for a moment and realizing that his life would probably really, really, really suck. It'd be in this moment that Naruto would have a, a cup of ramen float to him as, a, as um, you know, like the cup would already be poured with hot water and stuff. And Naruto would just begin eating as he would think to himself, what's what what the future holds for him eating as he thinks about whether he's ever going to face an opponent that's really going to give him a challenge or run for his money something and naruto would just eat and eventually the next day would come around following this we get two weeks worth of d-rank missions in which nothing particularly interesting would end up going down until eventually sasuke and sakura would end up saying or nah i think that sasuke would be the one that speaks up asking for a higher rank mission except not in the same way that naruto would have done but in a little bit of a different way because sasuke likes to carry himself in a different manner and i just don't see him disrespecting the hokage eventually hiruzen seeing that kakashi and naruto were on this team would just be like hey sure whatever why why don't i send naruto on, an, on a c rank mission it's not like he hasn't gone on s rank ones by himself and from here naruto would just go on to be like oh i have to walk somewhere as he's like why don't we just take him there now and um what's it called and naruto and the rest of the team would be like or sorry the rest of the team would look at naruto and be like what what do you mean take him there now to which naruto would immediately just poof, they would all teleport there and naruto would stand there in front with everybody with him as he would just say look you're here can we leave now but Tazuna would say the, the bridge still hasn't been built i i still have to build it and naruto looks at Tazuna just like are you serious like 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 you need us to help you build a bridge to which naruto would then go on to um would then go on to like flick his uh like like not flick his fingers but he would go on to like begin glowing a bit hold his hand out and see all the materials and debris that Tazuna was going to use for the bridge and finish it literally like in the course of the next minute from here Tazuna and everybody else watching would be stunned with Naruto and what he just did and the bridge would obviously be named the great Naruto bridge following this Naruto and the team would be like okay can we, Naruto no 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 Naruto would look at the uh Tazuna and be like can we leave now and Tazuna would be like no like you have to come to my house like I, I i can't thank you enough and naruto would be like i guess i could stay the night as from here the team would literally make their way over there and kakashi would be like when did naruto become team captain like he's over here making the decisions for me but kakashi would just shrug his shoulders and be like when you're that strong i mean whatever as he makes his way towards tazuna's house and tsunami would whip them up some delicious food it would be here that i think we would get a scene where inari would appear and be like you guys are wasting your time gato and his men are gonna kill you there's no way you're gonna be able to stop and naruto after hearing this would be like what are you talking about to the kid as tazuna would immediately like like at this point naruto's already done everything that they needed Nar uh so tazuna would yell at inari being like hey don't disrespect this young man he's the one who saved our village and from here inari would be like what as tazuna would go on to explain the entire backstory of why this is all happening with naruto looking at him and saying so this dude seems pretty evil um you want me to handle that for you and tazuna would look at naruto just being like what are you talking about naruto to which naruto literally in an instant would ask where he thinks uh um would ask who this gato guy is what he looks like and if he can give him any information on him tazuna would begin thinking about it but naruto would literally just read his mind and boom teleport there straight to where he believes that he can find information on gato he would begin questioning people over the course of that night and over the course of literally that night instead of sleeping naruto would find every single piece of information he can about gato 
find his base, destroy Gato and his men, and not only that, but empty out all of Gato's money reserves that he had gained over the over the time that he had been a, a, a lord in the uh, in that area or, or a drug lord, right? And so Naruto would literally arrive back towards Tazuna's house as he would literally drop a bag full of like so much money right there on that table and just go to sleep. Wake up a couple of hours later to Tazuna and like everyone in there just being like, Naruto, I can't believe you did it. And Naruto would be like, let me sleep as he goes back to sleep. And eventually he would wake up to which um, he would actually be woken up to Inari who would actually end up informing Naruto that that uh, at this moment, Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura would actually be in a fight. And Naruto would wake up being like, are you, are you serious? Like, what? And he would literally just, like, um, like, throw his blankets off and make his way towards the battlegrounds where they were actually facing off against Tazuna. Because, mind you, Zabuza still isn't aware that, you know, uh, Gato's dead. Like, it happened literally overnight. So, yeah. Uh, Tazuna was still there thinking that the mission was still going and Tazuna would arrive like trying to kill the bridge builder and so Haku would be facing off against Sasuke and uh, Sakura would be protecting Tazuna and Kakashi would be fighting off against uh, Tsuzabuza right and Naruto would arrive and he would just see a glimpse of Sasuke inside of ice crystal mirrors as Naruto would blip in there and instantly ask Sasuke what he's doing as Sasuke would look at Naruto and be like this is my fight naruto naruto looks at him and is like as far as i'm concerned this is my fight you can't beat this guy seriously and naruto would just look at one of the mirrors in which haku's inside of as he would ask him what the what the gist is with this jutsu as you know he would look at him and say this jutsu is so simple it's funny as from here you know like haku would realize that this kid is no one to be played with and so would begin using his max speed throwing a bunch of senbon but it's almost as if time would stop and naruto would pause each and every single one of those senbons in mid-air as he would enlarge them they would grow in, ma in size dramatically and pff, with so much force they would shatter each and every single one of the mirrors including one of the ones that haku was in so now haku would be pierced with a giant senbon going straight through his stomach and naruto would turn towards the direction of sasuke telling him that he knows he could have probably just used some sort of earth style jutsu to skewer the person to skewer this guy when he was teleporting from mirror to mirror doesn't he have a brain he would say as sasuke in this moment would be like Ugh. you know like like he after hearing that and naruto would just walk over towards haku asking him if he wants to die or he wants to live and haku would say i failed master zabuza like I, I have no more reason to live. To which Naruto would scoff, being like, are you kidding me? That's who you're living for? This is what your life is about? And Haku would tell him that it is. His purpose in life was to protect Zabuza, asking Naruto if he has a purpose. And it would be at this moment that Naruto would just pause, look at Haku, and just be like, I, I do. As Haku hearing that, he would realize like, so much power and yet, nothing it's almost as if this person is just power itself power incarnate but nothing else naruto in this moment would realize that he's kind of right and it would be at this moment that naruto would realize like i don't really have any friends i don't really have any particular things that i like other than ramen i just want to become hokage to control people is do i even have a goal a reason to live in that moment, Naruto would pause and just think about this. As Haku would slowly get up and realizing that Kakashi was about to skewer Zabuza with the uh, Chidori, he would begin rushing over there to try to jump in the way, but Naruto would pause everything, Kakashi, Zabuza, Haku, and say that he's decided that this battle's over and he has something to do. So he would look at Zabuza and Haku and tell them that Gato's dead. He killed them last night, so they're not even getting paid for this mission. And it'd be at this moment that Zabuza would look at Haku and look at Kakashi and say that he guesses they're done here for now. And they would just literally body flicker out of there. Naruto in this moment would just like straight up teleport back to the village where he would lay down on his bed and wonder, what is my reason for living? What is my purpose? And after thinking about this for a bit, Naruto would just kind of sit there in silence, realizing that his power has been so helpful in his life, but he basically is void of anything but that thinking to himself that maybe his power has been too much of a crutch for him his whole life 
he's always relied on it he practically doesn't even get up when he's hungry whenever he needs something he just teleports it to himself naruto feels like his life is just so easy it's boring and naruto decides on this moment that he's tired of that he wants to actually learn how to do things for himself he wants to actually become a ninja the right way without using his powers naruto decides that he's gonna stop using these powers unless he absolutely has to so naruto would like unconsciously place some sort of seal on his powers where now instead of him constantly having access to 100 of his power naruto's only going to be having access to it in the same way that mob is where it's only going to be in dire situations and whenever his not his emotions per se but just like the angrier he gets the less he's able to like control the power that he's holding within himself you know like the more his temper grows and stuff like that the more he like he's desperate the power comes out more and more and more and more and more and so naruto would literally just go outside and probably for one of the first times ever make his way towards the training ground where he would literally just grab a couple of kunais and say all right this wasn't that hard with my powers as he begins throwing them and realizes he's literally probably a good for nothing like he literally can't do a thing without his powers and naruto once he realizes that would be like well uh, if that isn't something as naruto would realize that he needs help and so naruto would sort of just wait for his team to get back from the mission as he would wait for them by the village gates not even using his powers but just kind of waiting for them to get back and the second that they would do so naruto would go over to the team and literally just bow down and ask them for his forget for forgiveness as the team would look at him and be like what are you talking about naruto and he would say that he's been not the best person ever looking towards kakashi and sasuke and asking them if they could help him out with something and Kakashi would look at Naruto and ask him what he could possibly need help with, as Naruto says he wants to learn Shuriken Jutsu. And from here, Nar Kakashi would raise an eyebrow as Sasuke would say, I'll show you. And from here, Sasuke would be thinking in his head that this is probably some sort of trick or game, but he would like have his guard up to Naruto, not knowing what's going to go on, but eventually the team would go to Hiruzen's office where they would be told that Naruto already briefed Hiruzen on what happened in the mission. If, if In fact, Hiruzen literally was so confident that mission was done, he already basically gave them their payments. And Naruto would hand them the bags as it would be in this moment that he would say, sorry, I kind of took the liberty of taking your payment. As it'd be in this moment that he like rubs the back of his head and Naruto wouldn't give off that aura that he usually gives off of so untouchable so much power naruto would feel human naruto would feel normal and so naruto and sasuke would make their way towards the training ground again where sasuke would ask naruto what the deal is if he really does want to learn shuriken jutsu considering naruto's the best in the class and naruto would say that is true when i use my powers but when i don't this is what i can do throwing the shuriken as he's he goes shuriken whatever jutsu and um yeah it's pretty bad sasuke once he sees that would be like what like what's going on why aren't you using your abilities as naruto would say i'm taking a break from them i want to find out what what more there is to life without those powers i mean i've used them as a crutch for so long and honestly i don't really want to anymore and so sasuke in this moment would look at naruto and be like he's willing to give up his powers even though he has so much like just being so confused because keep in mind sasuke is like bloodthirsty for powers meanwhile naruto couldn't care any less so sasuke's just in this situation where he's like okay and so for that following entire day sasuke and naruto would just be there learning each other like learning things about each other uh working through their abilities and all these different things and naruto and sasuke would actually end up creating a bit of a bond on this specific day like it would actually be kind of crazy how how fast their friendship was growing from one day and naruto and sasuke would actually end up finding themselves at tuichi's ramen place where naruto would end up getting the bill saying that he has a bit too much money than he knows what to do with as from here the following next couple of days naruto would straight up just train with sasuke and sasuke would realize that naruto's not half bad when he's not being all cocky naruto's not looking down on him anymore in fact naruto now is looking at him as a superior looking at him as someone who's training him and naruto would take everything he knows everything he's seen from the academy and begin actually applying it using the uh using his normal smarts that he would have developed to actually 
get through with all this and naruto would have decent would end up pretty much getting really 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 decent at shuriken jutsu naruto would also develop a bit of taijutsu since him and sasuke would spar however sasuke has to go extremely easy on naruto who at this point isn't like some crazy crazy weakling like mob was but um naruto definitely isn't as strong as he should be because this naruto doesn't have the nine tails inside of him to give him that superhuman strength that naruto the one that we know has so naruto's just kind of a normal person and so this is what would take place until eventually we would find ourselves outside of the tuning exams tower where they would all make their way inside considering they still end up saying they want to take this exam and once they're inside naruto would actually end up just like walking by sasuke's eventually lee would pop up and challenge naruto but naruto looks at lee and says he doesn't really want to that lee would probably beat him anyways as lee would say what you don't wish to test your strength against me do you do you think you're better than me and naruto would say quite the contrary lee i i actually think you're way too strong for me seriously i i don't think it'd be very fair and so lee really not wanting to take no for an answer knowing all the crazy stories about naruto would actually throw a quick a kick at naruto which naruto was completely unable to dodge not having his um crazy abilities this time around naruto wasn't able to predict it or anything and just straight up gets kicked in the face and sent flying into a wall as he hits the ground and just like begins holding his head like ah what'd you do that for with lee looking at him and being like what why didn't you dodge I i've heard of so many stories of your power and like he's like guy sensei has, has even told me your power is legendary and naruto would look at him and say yeah well i don't want to use my power as lee would look at him and just be like what as naruto would get back up and just be like leave me alone as he walks off and sasuke just like gives daggers to lee saying that he should never do that again saying that he shouldn't poke the bear and so eventually they would find themselves inside of the testing area where naruto's like all right i have to take this test but he realizes very quickly without the ability to read other people's minds he can't copy their answers so naruto just is sitting there without any answers just like he would be in the original and eventually when the proctor would say that there's one final question naruto would get up saying that he's gonna take it, saying his brand new catchphrase believe it inspiring everybody around him as a bunch of people would actually end up passing to the next section of the tuning exams and because of this what we would end up having is naruto sasuke sakura entering the section of the tuning exams this is where things are slightly going to be changing because like we know in the original the team kind of has it very easy in this section that is until naruto goes off to take a leak like he would in the original leaving sasuke and sakura by themselves to be actually ambushed by orochimaru this means that naruto would actually end up being eaten by a snake and when naruto was eaten by this snake naruto would like try to break out by using his kunais as like his percentage would go up fearing the prospect of death realizing he's literally he, he's like ah oh, i can't i don't want to use my powers i don't want to use my powers but ultimately he sort of has to when his percentage starts rising to like 30 percent as naruto would rip the snake in half instantly and come outside of it as he's like all right i won't use them again like calming down as eventually he would make his way towards the team running as fast as he can being like wait what was the password again as we would basically find ourselves with naruto seeing sasuke and sakura being uh, ambushed and sasuke hiding from this ninja naruto would sense an overwhelming aura of death coming off from this ninja and naruto was just unsure of what to do eventually naruto's like hey leave them alone as he runs in and tries to fight orochimaru with orochimaru straight up almost killing him if not for the fact that naruto's like naruto's like senses would go off the charts just like activating the barrier that he normally would have had with his powers as that would barely save his life like because it barely went on at that last second because if naruto really resolved his will of like i'm not going to use my powers he would have died there but he didn't luckily and he was sent flying through like a tree following this he would get up and look at sasuke and say come on sasuke if we're gonna beat this guy or we're gonna run away we gotta do it together as from here naruto and sasuke would look at each other nod and rush in towards the direction of orochimaru with naruto using a couple of shuriken jutsu and ultimately sasuke would create zip wire traps or like the the wire traps as orochimaru would be stuck in one and so Suddenly, a ton of shuriken would come flying at Orochimaru from every direction as Orochimaru would substitute out of there and right before Naruto realizes it Sasuke would have Orochimaru behind him as Sasuke would straight up give him a hickey and Naruto wait wait Sasuke would no Orochimaru would straight up give Sasuke hickey um obviously not really you know the curse mark it's jokes you know haha he he but um yeah 
uh sasuke has that happen and um he straight up falls off the branch hitting the floor with a loud thud naruto watching sasuke hit the floor a person who he's actually created a genuine bond with over the past week would just like it's like everything would stop and naruto in this moment like the percentage would in instantly shoot to the question marks as naruto seeing this just happen in front of him would just lose it suddenly this entire area would begin shaking as naruto's like aura would just completely change and orochimaru would turn to see naruto who has completely lost it at this point naruto would literally grab onto orochimaru using his telekinesis as he would hold him up in the air and like throw him up into the sky where he would rush at him and punch orochimaru over and over and over and over and over and over and over in the stomach setting him higher and higher and higher and higher until ultimately naruto would fly above him close his hands and slam his fists down on orochimaru sending him crashing to the ground where not only would he send him crashing to the ground but naruto would actually increase the gravity on orochimaru so much he wasn't capable of weaving hand signs of doing a thing orochimaru was straight up falling like a 100 like a 1000 pound object had just fallen from the sky and orochimaru was falling at some insane speeds as he would crash on the floor leaving a massive crater it would be at this moment that naruto would blitz back down there and suddenly this gigantic lightning fire water attack would just shoot down some boruto like level attack as naruto would just completely decimate orochimaru like there is nothing left and it would be in this moment that Sakura would be like, Naruto, stop. And Naruto turns to her, just like completely lost, like, as he completely lost it. And she would begin trying to talk to him, like in fear, just like, Naruto, uh, Sasuke's going to be okay. We, we can, we can treat him. And Naruto hearing that would like slowly start calming down as he realizes like he uses powers, but not only did he use his powers, but he completely lost control. And um, mind you, Naruto completely obliterated Orochimaru. So even though Orochimaru always comes back some way somehow through the through the means of curse marks, because uh, it takes like specific scenario like specific conditions for that to happen, Orochimaru isn't going to be coming back to life for this uh, for the portion of the tuning exams. So yeah, that's not going to be happening. But Naruto did uh, basically give them an easy way to make their way towards the tuning tower. Since this time around Naruto's there, he throws Sasuke on top of his back as they rush their way towards the uh, towards the uh, the tower, and they would actually end up arriving shortly after Gara's squad. Once they would get there, Naruto would tell uh, uh, what's it called Kakashi about this, and Kakashi would seal the curse mark on Sasuke, telling him how how the curse mark power works with naruto even looking at sasuke and being like i could remove it but i said i wouldn't use the powers like kakashi's already taking care of it right as it would be in this moment that he's like yeah 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 like that's that's exactly what's gonna happen i i shouldn't use my powers anymore like i almost freaked out and i honestly could have killed sakura in that moment and her um as well like i i lost it like i don't know what's wrong with me I, he, naruto had never ever lost his cool like that before and he's seen other co like people die around him on missions but he anytime that would happen he would just be like uh like they're dumb they deserved it but this time was just it was just so different and naruto couldn't really explain why maybe it was because this time around he actually cares about sasuke maybe it's because this time around he actually has a friendship somebody that he wanted to protect he would think back to what haku said and it would really hit him like maybe haku was onto something maybe protecting somebody and living for other reasons than just yourself is what life is about and so naruto sasuke and sakura would remain in the tower for about one day since they would get there way sooner than in the original and eventually the 1v1 battles would be told as they're like the preliminaries right so naruto would face off against kiba naruto would actually end up being defeated like I said, Naruto's not using his powers, and without his abilities, Naruto's 100% not beating Kiba. I mean, Naruto could potentially let one rip, and like maybe that's how he would beat him. But honestly, I don't think Naruto would last long enough to even get to the point where like he just farts in Kiba's face. So Naruto easily would be eliminated from the tuning exams. Kiba moves on, meaning Kiba's the one who has to face off against Neji, and that's just not going to be fun. So uh, yeah. That's what pretty much ended up going down here, and we would eventually jump into the one month of training, right? Here, 
Naruto wanted to like hang out with Sasuke and maybe train with Kakashi, but he realizes that Sasuke is actually going off to train with um with uh, Kakashi, and so he's like, you know what, like that's fine. And eventually Naruto would bump into Konohamaru, who um this time around, or sorry, not no not Konohamaru. Naruto wouldn't even have a relationship with him in this timeline. He would just look at Konohamaru as a fool. And so Naruto literally has nothing to do. And one day, as he's training, like trying to like improve his basic skills, Naruto would decide that he wants to go to the hot springs, right? He's earned it, Naruto would think. Like he used to go there all the time and just teleport there, but now he actually has to walk. So Naruto gets to it. Making his way there, he would see some weird old man with white hair as he's peeping on the girl's locker room. And Naruto would say, Hey, you want some help with that? Like in, in like a weird, like judging him kind of way, like a judgmental way. And Jirai would look at him and say, Oh, uh, I, I was just doing some research as Naruto says sure you were you perverted old freak as from here Jirai would look at Naruto and be like hey uh, you know you're speaking to one of the legendary Sonin right as Naruto would look at him and say oh you're one of the legendary Sonin well that's a shame I, I thought that you'd be a lot cooler not somebody that likes to peep on the women's restroom as he would yell that and a bunch of the girls there would start covering themselves up and be like ah you know what i mean <laughs> that would just be such a funny scene and jiraiya would grab naruto by the mouth being like hey kid be quiet as suddenly naruto would look at jiraiya and say so you're pretty strong right as he would look towards jiraiya and say how about you train me with jiraiya saying what no way i don't got time to train some some nosy brat like you as naruto would say cool all right, I guess I'll just have to go tell these girls what your name is, who you look like, and maybe even help them beat you up. And Jiraiya would be like, okay, 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 look, kid, look, I'll train you. And so we would get the iconic one month of training between Naruto and Jiraiya, in which this time Jiraiya isn't able to actually teach Naruto the summoning jutsu because naruto doesn't have that extra chakra that's gonna let him uh access the power of kurama and naruto still doesn't even know how to use his own chakra in battle so this time around jiraiya just genuinely tries to teach naruto the basics of being a ninja and we know that jiraiya is actually a good teacher obviously just not with naruto but this time jiraiya would just start teaching naruto the fundamentals over this one month training period and naruto would just have a blast eventually the day of the final battles like the final like four battles would come down and naruto Naruto wanting to watch how Sasuke performs would end up making his way there. He would be in the stands as Naruto would be like wondering like when is Sasuke gonna come? Like if Sasuke doesn't make it soon, he's probably gonna lose, you know? And it would be in this or, or be eliminated. And it'd be in this moment that we would get the Neji versus Kiba fight. But come on now, like I don't think even I have to tell you guys how that goes. Neji gets absolutely bodied. And um Kiba, or just Neji, <laughs> no, Kiba gets absolutely bodied, and eventually Sasuke would arrive all oh, so, so late that, like, they straight up almost canceled the battle, but, um, luckily, he would end up slightly arriving just on time, and Naruto would actually be there watching the battle, and eventually Sasuke goes crazy, uses the Chidori, and Gara tries to run away. Naruto realizing that Gara is, like, on some crazy timing would be, like, would be like what's up with this guy like why is he trying to run away from this battle the sand siblings would be like yo we have to get him away from the village because if he freaks out like crazy he could maybe destroy it but naruto in this moment would actually end up like using his powers being like nah like sasuke needs to finish this battle and so he would like hold gara in place as sasuke would go over to him and bam hit gara one good time taking him out completely like knocking him out but unfortunately for naruto he wasn't expecting that gara being unconscious means that shukaku would come to life and in that moment gara would begin like transforming into a gigantic shukaku state as naruto watches all this go down he's like yeah sasuke won't be able to beat that and he's not sure too many people here would but considering that this is happening in front of everybody Hiruzen, uh, Ra uh, no, not Rasa. Rasa would have still been dead. Uh, he wouldn't be even be present for their for that attack thing. But um, Orochimaru wouldn't even be there to like confirm the attack. So the ninjas that are there, are like, wait, do we attack? Do we not attack? But ultimately, I can see Naruto like not having it and like not wanting Tosuke to die. And he's like, you know what? I'll make an exception as he would use his powers to like hold Gara and like seal the 
re like tighten up the seal within uh shukaku as naruto would then like have gara just fall unconscious on the ground and suddenly sasuke would just be declared the winner following this we would have the final battle which would be neji versus sasuke and this battle i'm honestly not too sure who would win because obviously we know that sasuke has access to the curse mark sasuke has access to a couple more chidori bursts and neji just got done fighting kiba so he's not even winded this is one of those interesting fights but um ultimately i'm not sure who would win because even though sasuke has like insane taijutsu because he copied lee's abilities he doesn't have the gates so the way i see this battle going is uh, sasuke and neji would start the battle off by going crazy like fighting each other yada 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 but neji would have such a huge advantage on sasuke considering the fact that he has the gentle fist in close combat so sasuke would slightly be keeping up and eventually he would realize that he can't do it even with this sharing on neji is outclassing him and sasuke would be getting angrier and angrier being like no like i can't i can't lose like i have to get stronger like i have to beat neji if i can't beat neji how will i beat itachi so sasuke starts like getting angrier and angrier and so he lets the power of the curse mark come out and so neji and sasuke would continue fighting but as the battle would go on with uh neji's uh with with uh with sasuke's curse mark neji would une inevitably be unable to keep up and so i can see sasuke ending up landing one good chidori to neji obviously not not in a vital area but um neji from here would fall to the ground and sasuke would like stumble because like he's super tired the curse mark took a huge toll on him i could see neji also even dodging like three chidoris where it took a lot of effort for sasuke to even be able to land the one and ultimately sasuke would win this battle with naruto just going crazy in the stands like cheering on for sasuke and sasuke would have a huge smile on his face like knowing that he won as um it would be in this moment that naruto and everybody else would just have a good day hiruzen doesn't even end up dying so now naruto doesn't even have to go for tsunade because orochimaru never ended up doing all the crazy stuff he did in the original because orochimaru is not going to be around sasuke is not going to end up being enticed because of that reason itachi is actually going to be in the village but just like in the original i don't see itachi and kisame actually getting to naruto and instead they would stop once they uh once they would end up encountering kakashi my guy and all that stuff but say the battle does keep going i can see uh mike guy eventually tapping into the gates and like really really starting to go crazy like getting to the seventh gate if they don't retreat and once that would end up happening i can see itachi and uh kisame retreating saying that it's not worth it that there will be a casualty if they stay here for any longer so um when it comes to that i can see them leaving and then we're able to have this time skip where sasuke would actually be informed that itachi was in the village and naruto would actually go see sasuke and be like yo sasuke like uh you want to train sometime and sasuke's like i i can't i can't train with you right now naruto like itachi just came to the village and i i know that if i would have fought him i would have been too weak and so naruto looks at sasuke and he's like why do you have such a crazy obsession with killing your brother like he just straight up plainly asks him and sasuke would just look at naruto and be like what do you mean why do i have this crazy obsession he massacred my clan naruto he killed my family in front of me and naruto would look at him and say i get that but it's just like you're really gonna let him control your life that's what your life's about killing somebody seriously sasuke i don't know if i have to be the first one to tell you this but i've killed more than my fair share of people and it never leaves you feeling any better when i killed gato and freed those people i only did it because it was accord quote unquote the right thing to do but it didn't fill me with anything no fulfillment i just did it because it was a mission and if i could get a couple extra bucks for that i'm gonna do it and sasuke would just look at naruto be like you wouldn't understand what it's like to have everything taken from you and naruto would say i kind of do sasuke the day that i was born i killed the nine tails the day that i was born my mother and father were both ripped away from me and i had to grow up all by myself so to answer your question, Sasuke, I don't know what it's like to go through your exact situation, but I know what it's like to lose my parents. Maybe I didn't know them, so I wasn't as close to them as you are, but I didn't even get the chance to get to know them. You did. You don't even know why your brother killed the Uchiha clan. Have you ever even stopped to think about that? And if your quest is to kill him so bad, I could just give you the power. At any moment, I could just give you my powers and you could kill him easily. So why do you have to sit here and waste your entire life training just to kill him? 
and sasuke looks at him and says he, he it's not the same like it has to be his power he has to earn it and naruto would look at sasuke and say sasuke i can read your thoughts you're willing to do anything and everything to get that power why can't i just give it to you and kill him that way you're so obsessed with killing your brother you're not gonna live your own life Sasuke, I put my insane powers to the side because I wanted to live a life. And you're going to sacrifice it all for power? Like, do you want to trade, Sasuke? Is that what you want? And Sasuke would look at Naruto and say, you had it so easy. You were always so strong. And Naruto says, you know what, Sasuke? Power isn't everything. As he would just stay silent and walk away. And Sasuke would just sit there, like, list pondering everything that Naruto just told them. As Sasuke would just be like, he doesn't know anything. Like, he doesn't know what it was like to lose your family. He doesn't know what it was like to have your brother tell you that you're not worth anything. You're not even worth killing. What does Naruto know? Naruto doesn't know anything. Does he? Naruto would think, or sorry, Sasuke would think. And so, we would jump cut to Naruto in his room as he's just kind of tossing a ball up in the air. And suddenly, Jiraiya would end up entering the room as he would end up asking Naruto if how, how he would like to actually train a little more with Jiraiya. Naruto would immediately have a huge smile on his face and say, sure thing, let's do it. And Jiraiya would say, alright, cool, pack your bags because we're going to be leaving. And Naruto's like, wait, what do you mean we're going to be leaving? As Jiraiya would say, well, the Akatsuki are a threat and they're going to be coming after you. And Naruto would be like, what, why? I don't even have the nine tails in Shuriki. To which Jiraiya would say, I know, but we have to let everybody else believe you do. So as far as we're concerned, you need to get stronger. Plus, didn't you say that's what you wanted, Naruto? You wanted more power? As you wanted to get power on your own and not rely on those crazy abilities? And Naruto looks at Jiraiya and he's like, you know, you're right. I, I do want to learn how to be my own ninja, be my own man. And so he would turn towards Jiraiya and say, but can I, can I maybe bring someone else along? And Jiraiya would look at him being like, what do you mean someone else along? Suddenly, Naruto would end up just basically running to Sasuke's house, where Naruto would look and see Sasuke just like sitting there. And he was about to actually go search out for Naruto to like talk to him a little more. But Naruto would look at him with a big smile on his face as he would say, Sasuke, you said you wanted power, right? Like out of breath because he had just ran from his house to the other side of the village where Sasuke's at. And he says, come with me and Jiraiya sensei. We can train together and become better ninjas. And Sasuke would look at Naruto, have a smile on his face and say, <laughs> loser, fine, I'll go with you. As the both of them would end up going on the training journey with Jiraiya and each of them would actually train and get stronger every single day. After the three year time skip, I believe Naruto would be just at the same level that he would be in the original, so Sasuke would be the stronger of the two when it comes to their ninja abilities just like in the original, and Naruto that whole time literally never used his powers. It's been three years since he's used his powers mind you, and that's absolutely insane. And Naruto, you know, he's not weak at all, he's like he's pretty strong, so everything could not be going any better for Naruto. Once they would return to the village, Sakura would like be all blushy blushy over Sasuke and Sasuke not being dark would actually reciprocate those feelings. Naruto returning to the village and not having to deal with Tsunade, he would never even have to take like the little bell test thing. However, one thing would happen, which is that Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, as well as Kakashi, would be sent off on a mission to retrieve the Kaze Kage of the, oh wait, no, the Kage of the Sand Village, right, Gara, Because just like in the original, the Akatsuki are still going to be kidnapping Gara, right? So Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke would make their way there alongside Kakashi. And um, Sakura, just like in the original, she would end up healing Konkuro. Nothing changes there. Lady Chiho would still attack Kakashi, being like, how dare you show your face around here? But obviously, like, nothing would end up happening because Kakashi stops her. And eventually, she would go along with the mission, which is the best part, considering if she doesn't, Kakashi, or sorry, not Kakashi, but Gara sort of stays dead. Anyways, um, what would pretty much end up taking place is once they would arrive there, uh, Sakura being like, all right, I'll handle this, as she would use her fist and be like, cha, smashing the door open, with Naruto being like, wow, Sakura, you've gotten a lot stronger, and Sakura saying, you have no idea. Suddenly, Naruto would end up uh, like entering, and, and, and in that moment, a gigantic clay bird would go flying out, as that would be Daedara, right? And Naruto would turn towards Sasuke, with Sasuke saying, I got it, leaping up into the air, as he would immediately 
tap into his um his curse mark two abilities for the wings like flying on after him and sasuke would like literally just be chasing after datara who would throw explosions in the air but sasuke like he's not affected by it and so datara and sasuke would go down here and you know we know what happens in the original when datara fought sasuke this time sasuke is going to be killing datara and um, just like in the original, Data is still going to be using his crazy, crazy explosion. So Sasuke is still unfortunately going to have to do his whole, um, like, uh, what's it called? He's still going to have to do the whole um, reverse summoning himself so he doesn't actually end up, you know, dying. And so Naruto, Sakura, Kakashi, would be, and Lady Chiyo would be responsible for taking out Sasori. And since in the original, Sa Sakura was actually able to do it with the help of Lady Chiyo, considering Sasori kind of let himself be beat, there's no reason for me to believe that this battle would be any more difficult. Now they have Kakashi, who is like an insane fighter, and Naruto, who is, you know, like getting better at fighting every single day and has become a fine young man, actually. Uh, what this would lead to is basically them taking him out and Sasuke returning for extremely battle damage, being like, Deidara was a pain. With Naruto saying, if he needed some help, he could have just called him. With Sasuke being like, shut up, loser. And so what would pretty much end up going down is they return to the village with Gara having been revived by Lady Chiho. And, um, and after this would take place, we would essentially just get Naruto, like, we would just get Team 7 back in the village chilling, as eventually they would be called to go on another mission, considering this time they don't go on the Tenshi Bridge arc, because, you know, Sasuke's still there, Orochimaru still hasn't came back from the dead, but he could whenever the situation calls for it, but it doesn't matter, the team's just... They can, they can handle Orochimaru at this point. That's all I'm getting to. Uh, wait, actually, Orochimaru hasn't lost his arm. So maybe maybe Orochimaru could actually pose a little bit of a threat here. But um, no, yeah. Uh, the team would go on a mission. And while they're on a mission, on their way back, they would end up finding out that Asuma Sensei would have ended up losing his life in a battle against the Akatsuki. Once this happens, Team 7 would be told to go alongside Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji. And they would go get their lick back for everything that just happened. Fortunately for them, they would easily be able to take out Hidan and Kakazu, considering that the only person they had to actually fight was Kakazu, and Naruto using his Rasen Shuriken ability, which is something that he still would develop just like in the original, would actually end up as like mopping the floor with uh with Kakazu, with Sasuke just watching and being like, Naruto's getting stronger, you know? And eventually they would return to the village. Here is where things would sort of start picking up because Kakazu was not really a big deal, right? But there is one character that is going to serve to be a pretty big deal, and that is Itachi, right? Because at this point of the story, this is around the same time that Jiraiya would end up going off to face off against Pain. Not only that, but this is also around the same time that Sasuke would actually be told to go over there and, you know, face off against um his brother Itachi at the old Uchiha comp compound. So what would pretty much end up going down is that Naruto and Sasuke would both end up in the cover of night, literally just leaving the village and going to the location that Itachi would say he's located at. And so once they would end up getting close, just like in the just like when um just like in the original story, like if you guys were actually watching the anime or you guys remember, when Naruto and Sasuke or sorry, uh, Sasuke and, and 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 Team Taka would arrive, Sasuke was actually the only one that was let past because Kisame told the rest of them that they weren't allowed to go through. However, this time around, unlike Team Taka, Naruto's not just gonna sit there and let Kisame tell him what to do and not help his best friend. So Naruto would look at Kisame and tell him that he's going to get past him, whether he likes him or not. Turning to Sasuke as he would tell him that he'll catch up in a bit. And so Sasuke would just look at Naruto, nod, and Kisame would turn towards the direction of Naruto, holding his blade Samehata at him, saying that if it's a fight he wants, then he's going to die now. And if anything, it's not too bad to take him out now since they do need to take his tailed beast. And so Kisame would immediately go on the offensive and slash his sword at Naruto who would hold a kunai in front of him and Naruto would be sent flying back. Keep in mind, Naruto really only has the Rasen Shuriken at his disposal and without Sage Mode, there is just no shot at all that Naruto is going to be capable of beating Kisame. So I can see the battle going this way. Naruto does his absolute best to land any sort of blow on Kisame, whether it be Shuriken, whether it be throwing a kunai at him, whether it be him trying to land a Rasengan using multiple shadow clones to actually get close and attack him, but nothing would work for Naruto at all. Seriously, nothing is working. Kisame is way too strong, way too fast, and with that gigantic sword that would be sapping Naruto's chakra slowly, 
things wouldn't be getting easier for Naruto at all. Eventually, Kisame would begin absolutely beating down on Naruto, and Naruto's percentage would start going up and up and up and up and up and up, thinking to himself that if he's not there for Sasuke and that battle somehow goes like off the charts, like Sasuke could die. Not only that, but Naruto's gonna die now unless he does something about it. So right before like uh, Kisame was about to actually slash him like straight clean in half, Naruto would stop Kisame as his eyes and his whole aura and demeanor would change, grab the blade Samehara and just poof, tear it in half. Kisame suddenly seeing this would start stepping back in like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like you weren't this strong a moment ago. And, not, and like the the mob psycho music would start playing in the background is like like uh, i can't i don't even remember the song okay but naruto just starts going bananas on kisame absolutely dismantling this man with kisame basically accepting death eventually naruto would begin crushing kisame under the force of gravity and kisame would just close his eyes like knowing that he was just beaten eventually kisame would just be crushed so far down that his bones and everything would just be shattered and naruto from here would instantly fly towards the direction of itachi and sasuke's fight it would be at this point that naruto would see that kisame or sorry that itachi and sasuke were actually outside and that there was like a, a giant blast of kidding coming down naruto would smile thinking to himself that it's over like checkmate right but suddenly a gigantic susano would end up appearing in front of itachi and naruto seeing this would be like what the as like sasuke would like look at him and you know itachi would begin like walking closer inching closer to him being like well done sasuke you know what i mean and so it would be at this point that sasuke would um would uh like like start like losing his chakra orochimaru would start coming out of his curse mark and stuff like that and itachi would actually end up sealing uh, orochimaru and all that stuff would end up going down just like it does in the original so now orochimaru came back to life right now orochimaru is able to like be back in the series since he was able to escape just a little part of him right and so because of this what we would end up pretty much having go down is that itachi would get closer 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 and closer and naruto would mistake this moment for itachi trying to kill him so naruto would blitz in front of him and hold itachi in place saying he's not going to be touching his brother as from here itachi would turn to naruto and naruto in this moment would actually read the thoughts of itachi as itachi at this moment was thinking i'm glad sasuke has a friend and like he would just be thinking I never did get the chance to tell him I'm sorry. And Naruto would just like look, be like, what do you mean? As he like looks at Itachi and he's like, what do you mean you're sorry? With Itachi like looking at Naruto being like, he knows what I'm thinking. And Naruto saying, what are you thinking? And Itachi would just say, I'm sorry, Sasuke. As he just dies, like his life force just couldn't do it anymore. Itachi was too sick. His chakra was running out. He used everything up that he could have possibly used. And there was nothing left for Itachi to do. In this moment, uh, Naruto would watch as Sasuke would just fall onto his knees and would scream out, No! You know what I mean? Something like that. And um, Naruto in this moment would look at Sasuke and tell him that before Itachi died, he had something that he wanted to tell him. That he was sorry for massacring the clan and that he loved them. And Sasuke, like hearing that, would just be like, He's li like, you're lying, Naruto. You're lying as his uh sharingan would uh, like evolve to the mangekyo state and naruto would just stand there with sasuke telling him he's not itachi really wasn't a bad guy with sasuke not being able to fit that idea in his head but it would be in this moment that another person would end up actually arriving there and that would be obito right with obito actually arriving there this would mean one thing obito went and he's like sasuke is coming with me you know what i mean and he would like clap it up for naruto saying great job defeating itachi you know if you hadn't done it then then i would have done it myself as naruto turns to toby and is just like who are you and obito would look at him and say i'm madara uchiha suddenly he would just walk right through naruto phasing through him grab sasuke and begin to like begin warping away but naruto's not having it he like holds his hand out and he's like you're not taking sasuke and obito would be like what like what is this as naruto would be like become angry at the fact that he really just tried to take sasuke in front of him and naruto understands like the nature of that jutsu he just used there's no way he's touching him plus if naruto was unable to beat one of his like lowly 
characters of the Akatsuki, he wasn't going to be able to beat the leader. So now Naruto like was not playing any games and he would just look at Obito as he separates Sasuke from him. And suddenly Naruto would turn to Obito and say, what do you want with Sasuke? As Obito would look at Naruto and tell him that that's for him to know and for Naruto not to know. As Obito would finally end up warping off like fully away into the Kamui dimension, but Naruto would straight up follow him there. Like, he just teleports in there with Naruto saying, This is some place you got here, now talk. As he freezes him and he begins like literally holding his hand out as Obito begins choking. Like, he's like, <laughs> you know, and Naruto like literally like using his telekinesis, snap. Like, all, like one finger from Obito's hand would crack and Obito would look at Naruto and just be like telekinesis eh as Naruto snaps another one and another one and another one and another one and finally his wrist would snap his his like forearm would break his like arm it would be bent inwards and Naruto's like you better start speaking as Obito would say that his plan was to take Sasuke and tell him about the truth of Itachi with Naruto asking Obito what the truth was and Naruto would end up finding out that Itachi really didn't want to kill the 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 uh, the Uchiha clan. That it was actually all Donzo and Haruzen's fault. And once Naruto realizes that, he would just be like, "I could not have been more right about Haruzen being an incompetent leader." So Naruto would now just look at Obito and be like, "You know, I was gonna spare you, but where's the fun in that?" As Naruto would completely like snap Obito's neck in that moment. And he would just warp back in front of Sasuke. As seeing Sasuke there, Naruto in this moment would just like get down on one knee as he picks Sasuke up over his like body and he ends up thinking to himself that he does not want to be the one to tell Sasuke this but he has to be. He would make his way back to the village in like a couple of days letting Sasuke regenerate and that would be one of the worst calls that Naruto could have possibly made because Pain still ends up arriving to the village and with Pain arriving to the village this would mean that while Naruto was on his way back there just like waiting to completely scold Hiruzen for everything that happened Naruto would arrive to seeing a massive crater where the village once was and just then absolute silence would fill the air as Naruto would once again lose it. In a moment of rage, similar to when um, in Mob Psycho they kidnapped like his family and they made it look like his family died and all that stuff, Naruto would just instantly teleport, like like trying to find out, finding out everything that happened here, realizing that it was pain. Naruto would instantly seek out pain, and he would just wipe out anybody that he came into contact with. Like anytime that he was slightly wrong and he bumped into like somebody that wasn't responsible, that person got absolutely destroyed. And once Naruto got in front of pain he would look at him and just be like are you the one responsible for this with nagato looking at him and saying that he is and naruto in this moment would hold one hand out in front of nagato as he begins like holding him and moving nagato and he begins like trying to kill him but konan would fly at him and naruto was just not having it using his telekinesis he would crush konan under the force of gravity and make her watch as he straight up was about to kill nagato but nagato would say that if he kills him he'll never see his friends again Naruto in that moment would stop and ask him what he means by that, as Nagato would explain that with the Rinnegan, he has the ability to bring anybody back from the life, or actually to life, sorry. And so Naruto would say, thanks for telling me. As it'd be in this moment that Naruto would straight up just manipulate Nagato to form the hand signs and forcibly bring back every single person that died there. Meaning Hiruzen gets another two years of life, Kakashi gets brought back from the dead, and all those random villagers that ended up dying to that attack would be brought back. Mind you, their bodies like smelled awful because they were like dead for a bit, and Nagato would just straight up die right after that. As Naruto just walks out of there and Conan, like he would just literally leave Conan alive. He's like, as he would say, why don't you go ahead and make yourself useful? Suddenly he would leave and Conan would just be there crying over the body of Nagato. As Naruto would return to the village where he would actually be hailed as the hero of the village for having stopped pain. And this would conclude the Naruto story the way that I think it actually could have had a really cool ending. With Naruto being hailed the hero of the village, Naruto saving everybody from the dead, gaining respect, Sasuke's in the village, Sakura's in the village, Jiraiya was the only one that lost his life, and that would conclude the story 
of what if Naruto had mobs powers. Let me know what you guys thought about this one down below in the comments. Honestly, it's been a while since I've uh, like actually had a story like this come from the top of my head and I actually had as much fun as I did with this one. The plot to the story was incredible in my opinion and honestly, I, I would do another one of these one hour videos like if I if I had to. The reason that you guys are getting so many of these videos is because I haven't uh, been working a lot this week. So I figured, hey, if I'm not working at that job, I'm going to be working at this job. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Please leave a like on this video, seeing as it's the only way to sort of let the algorithm know to for more people to see this video. Because recently, I don't know what's up with YouTube, but they haven't been recommending my videos. And also, if you made it one hour into a video, like stop mooching off of me bro like dude like I'll hook your boy up come on now like don't be a freeloader don't be a lame so yeah leave a like on this video share it with a friend and comment down below what your favorite part of this video was and with all that out of the way ladies and gentlemen i love each and every single one of you guys god bless